Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos. And a few months ago we were out at New Germany State Park and we talked about how there were trainfuls of young men from Baltimore who went out there in the 1930s as part of the Civilian Conservation Corps, the CCC, to help create that park. The companies that went out there, the CCC companies, were all white. That was a white camp in New Germany. Today I'm down along the CNO Canal, the Chesapeake and Ohio Ohio Canal. In fact, you can see lock number 11 behind me. We're right near Carter Rock, which was the camp for CCC employees. Here, there were loads of young men from Baltimore who joined young men from Philadelphia and Washington, D.C. to help uh, build the CNO Canal National Historic Park, and those young men were black. Their camp was located at Carter Rock, and they cleared and made trails uh, uh, here along the canal. That's what we're going to talk about today. But first, let me, uh, let me start with a word about the CCC and maybe a short word about uh, at least some of the black experience with the CCC. The CCC, of course, uh, started in the 1930s. Uh, Congress and Franklin Delano Roosevelt, President Roosevelt, started it as a way to provide jobs during the Great Depression. For reference, in 1933, at the peak of the Depression, some 20% of Americans were out of work. In many black communities, that number was double or even triple. So really uh, an enormous impact. Over the lifespan of the CCC, from 1933 until it ended right in the when the United States joined World War II in 1942. Um, some three million people were employed, so it was a, a pretty big deal. Um, from the get-go, when Congress enacted the law that established the CCC, there was exactly one black congressman. Um, his name was Oscar de Priest. I believe he was from Illinois. And he made sure that the CCC had language in it that prohibited uh, discrimination based on race or color or creed. And that was a big first step. But this was in an era where separate was considered equal, and that language had only limited impact. Um, there were, in the beginning, the CCC had integrated uh, companies, um, although as a somewhat aside, there were some 80,000 Native Americans who were also employed by the CCC. Almost all of them uh, were on reservations, and so those companies remained um, almost exclusively Native American. But at the beginning, uh, at least uh, black and white Americans uh, uh, often found themselves in integrated companies. But in 1935, the head of the CCC ordered that segregated companies would be the rule there could be some exceptions, but the rule was there would be black companies and separate white companies. Um, and, uh, and that's how it stayed for the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the time. Here in Maryland, uh, we had a number of black camps. I think we had 15 total CCC camps. A number of those were, were black, uh, black companies. We had black companies in Cedarville State Forest in Prince George's County. Um, the men there cleared fire roads and built trails, uh, helping that state forest get going. There was another black company company in Flintstone in Allegheny County at Camp Green Ridge. Um, they did pretty much the same thing, although their camp kind of had everything. It had a reading room, an education building. There were baseball teams and basketball teams. They even had a singing quartet. The company that occupied that camp was com Company 335-C. The dash C stood for colored. That's how you knew it was a black company as opposed to a white company. And there were two black companies here along the CNO Canal, turning this into a national park. It was company 325C and 333C. They renovated 20 miles of this canal, uh, digging the canal out and creating the uh, footpaths that I'm standing on right now. The work was sorely needed. In 1924, there was a huge flood on the Potomac that wiped out this section of canal. Um, Congress started thinking about uh, buying this and turning it into a national park, but then the Great Depression happened and uh, funding dried up. But in 1938, Frank Franklin Delano Roosevelt, President Roosevelt, and First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt personally intervened, got $2 million rounded up to buy this uh, property, turned it into a national park, and then got the CCC to do the labor needed to actually make it workable. The historical record is not entirely clear on why there were two black companies assigned here, but you don't have to read too much between the lines to get a good idea why. First of all, in the 1930s, this area was pretty remote, and it was the CCC's policy to put black companies in remote areas away from white communities. We get another
another sense of that from the records of the CCC itself. As the work here progressed and people were starting to uh, come out and visit it, on weekends especially, the CCC uh, told the black employees basically to go home and they brought in white CCC workers uh, from a nearby camp. In the words of the CCC, the white workers were, quote, better adapted for this work. The work that they were better adapted for was directing uh, parking, directing traffic towards parking. So again, you don't need to read too much between the lines to see what's going on there. The second thing is at least one of the companies, I think it was company 333, was moved here from a place called the Wilderness of Virginia. That's a Civil War site. They had been working out there. Uh, but then the uh, CCC determined, I'm going to quote them again, quote, that there was a pressing need for contact and guide services that might be met by white enrollees. Basically, they didn't want white visitors to this Civil War site to interact with black employees. And so the black company was sent here. But there was a third reason they were sent here that, that didn't have to do with race, and that was their experience. At the wilderness, um, this company had gotten tremendous experience in conservation landscaping and moving massive amounts of earth effectively and building and restoring uh, uh, footpaths like the one that I'm standing on. Um, all of those were the tasks needed to turn this uh, swampy, flooded area into a national park. Um, one more thing before I wrap up, the historical record does not have too much about the men who actually worked here. We have rosters of names and, and that's kind of it, but we do have a few bits on a few people. Let me just read out a few of these. There was a gentleman who worked here named Sidney Halsey. He went on to move to Charleston, West Virginia and was one of the first people in the country to uh, sign up for the selective service draft. He worked in an army hospital, unfortunately got tuberculosis and died. There was another gentleman, Ta Thomas Bass Knight. He, he went on to become a chief air traffic controller in North Carolina. A gentleman named Leroy Bernard ended up joining the Department of Justice as an investigator and investigated the Tokyo war crimes uh, after the end of World War II. And then there was a gentleman named Ralph Heppel who went on to write one of the first histories of the National Military Park in Frederick and Spotsylvania counties in Virginia. He went on to become a historian. Um, there is a blog, a couple online blogs of people who are trying to find out more information about the CCC camp and the people who were there. We'll put a link up for that. But I'm going to close to say next time you're down here along the CNO Canal, uh, maybe uh, stop for a few minutes and pause and say a thank you to the young black men from Baltimore and Washington and Philadelphia who made this national park possible. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time.